Hey everyone, welcome back to James's Repair Shop. Got the old uh, 65 hardtop up on the hoist. Finally, I got my hoist set back up again. Man, it's been driving me nuts not having this. I'm getting too old to be laying on my back uh, doing all that work. So anyway, uh, I've got it up here and uh, the car has a, a, a brake caliper that it's sticking a tiny bit. It's not, jam it's not locked right on, but it, it's sticking. You can see that it's uh, not turning freely. So I'll do both sides, but I'm going to show um, how to do this. Uh, these, these brake calipers, I should talk about them a little bit before we go into this. These are a four piston brake caliper. Uh, the pistons are chrome plated. They're not a complicated setup. There's only an O-ring in each piston and a dust seal. Um, but these uh, pistons can get stuck in there very easily. And I think that's all that's going on in here. Now I'll know when I take it apart, if the piston chrome is like rusted and pitted, well, you can make it work for a little while, but really you need to replace the pistons or get a, get a whole new rebuilt. But I think I can just go ahead, uh, pull these apart and clean them up and put them back together and they'll just be just fine. Uh, with these pistons though, with the four pistons, it's a bit tricky to get them out and you can't pry on them. So we'll talk about that um, when I get it off. Uh, I have a little trick that I use. It's not my, it's not my invention or anything like that sort. It's just a way that it's been done, I think, over the years. I, I Somehow I picked up on it. I don't really know at this point where I learned this little trick. Just saw it somewhere probably 30, 40 years ago. But it'll help you get these uh, pistons apart. Uh, get them out of the out of the cylinder and then you can take your uh, cl emery cloth and clean up the rusted area because you don't want to be prying on these pistons so you break the you break the end off them or scar them off and then they'll leak ideally you would want uh, a rebuild kit for these I don't have one but I think as long as they don't leak uh, fluid afterwards it'll be fine so let's get the wheel off I'll get the piston up on a bench I'll get the piston or the caliper off rather we'll get it up on a bench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we are. I have my uh, little hose crimper. So I want to crimp off the rubber hose here and I'm just using a pair of needle nose vice grips with a piece of old uh, gas line on it and uh, hopefully you can see that and all I'm doing is just biting down on that not as quite that hard but there we go just to stop the leaking don't want to drain the master cylinder if your rubber lines are cracked or anything replace them these ones are in good shape so now I'm going to crack the uh, the brake line from the body over just going to crack it for now also while i'm here because these brake calipers are built in two pieces i'm going to uh, crack these crossover lines these brake calipers have an inner and outer piece so this is the inner piece and this is the outer piece each have a piston in them actually let me get this uh let me find the other wrench let me get this uh shield off and you can see it better the anti-rattle shield and a lot of times you'll get these, these bolts won't come out and they'll break off. So you'll have to deal with it. And I'm quite sure the one on the other side is broken. There's one already broken. But anyway, put that wrench down. These ones are working well. I had them off before, but I'm quite sure the other one I broke at one point. So that's what these are. They have the uh, anti-rattle clips on them. Set that aside, you'll need it later. So here you are, this is the joint right here. So this is the outer part, which has two pistons, and this is the inner part with two pistons. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my wrench back here. I'm gonna crack these lines while it's up in a nice firm spot. And that's a, what is this, a 3 8 tube wrench. And the, these uh, go easy, because you don't want to twist the line. So like this one is right here. So if it's twisting, you're gonna have to get some, uh, 
heat on it or some uh, liquid wrench or not liquid wrench but some penetrating let me try the other one if one is tight then the other one probably is too yeah so i'm gonna have to deal with that so let me get that dealt with and i may do that on the bench it might be easier now that i broke them free to get some heat on it you can see how it's twisting that line you don't don't go any further the nuts broke so what i'm going to do because i'm already here i'll take this line off we'll pull the uh brake caliper off since we're right here now doing it and uh, i'll take these lines off on the workbench i'll probably have to put a little heat on them but i'll i'll drain all the uh fluid of them first so these are the things you run into so let's get this uh banjo bolt out And then I'll get a I'll get a socket and a breaker bar to get the rest off once this drains down a bit. All right, so the two bolts in here are 15 16 That holds the caliper to its mount, mounting place. And then these other two bolts are 9 16 and they're the ones that allow you to split this apart, but you have to take this line off first. So let me try to get this done. I think you're kind of in the way, but let me see how hard these are on. There it goes. Well, I whacked you in the face. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let me get this off. The, there's the two bolts. I have them broke free. Uh, the bottom one is a long bolt, I believe. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, it's a longer one than the top one. So when you go to put it back together, the short bolt goes up top. Yeah, see like that. So the short bolt on top and the long bolt on the bottom. And uh, you won't get the long bolt in the top. So if you have to remember that, if you're running into trouble with that part of it, you probably get the bolt in the wrong hole. Now these should come right off. This one isn't stuck on. However, if yours was clamped on and locked on, like it could possibly be, you can break these free, these 9 16 and let it split a little bit. It won't hurt this line to move a little bit. But this one here seems to be good. The pads look good on this one. Rotor's thin. Uh, I might have to put another rotor on that, but I'm going to decide. Anyway, so let me get it off on the bench and we'll, we'll go from there. Oh, and before I take off with this, I should say the shoes on these cars, these brake pads rather, they come, off through, they come out through the top. A little bit jammy sometimes, especially I'm sitting on this rotor spinning around there. But that's what you, you might have to pry them out or get them cockeyed a little bit to to get them out but they do come up through like so anyway that's jamming in there they're tight there it goes if you're reusing them make sure you know which side is which so the back side is there and i'll set them in order so i know which ones they are and there's the front one all right let's go over to the bench all right so i've got it up on the device here I'm going to take these, uh, try to get these nuts off first for this crossover line. Uh, and then uh, we'll go into taking this apart. So first thing, I'm going to clean this up a tiny bit with a wire or a uh, stainless steel brush. I don't think it's going to help much. Both sides. Ideally, you'll want it to be able to turn on the, on the pipe right there. So if you can get that cleaned up now, it's better, better ahead. But anyway, you do it how, whatever works for you. And then I'll put a little bit of uh, my old deep creep on it. And we'll have to let that sit for a minute or two. That one, I'll have to wait till we turn it up a little bit. Hey, both of them, we'll give her a little bit of a upward motion. That way the deep creep can get down in between, hopefully. And I think I'm going to heat those a little bit. Because so you don't want, I don't want to break them. They're good lines. They just need to be treated gently. Okay, I'm going for uh, these nuts. I was going to use a torch, but I figured, well, why not use the induction? So let's go for the induction. Let's see how it goes. My uh, coating's all come off, so hopefully it doesn't arc up on us. Ooh, that's quick. Get down a little bit further toward the nut. Let's 
see if that helped any. Had a little wiggly to get it on there. It's hot. Give her another shot. Getting the pipe good and hot. That's, that's what we need to break it free. a little bit. You can't squeeze the pipe or you'll break it. But I just want to hold it some. There she goes. I think I got it. Very gently guys if you're doing this. Very gently. I do have a spare pipe but I really don't want to use it up here. And you can make new ones. You can just get a piece of the brake line fix, the same length, but you have to put that clip back on. But don't pinch these tubes. So you're just holding it, not pinching it. Look at that. No, oh, it's still turning. There it goes. I felt it. It broke free. There she goes, look at that. Yeah, this is a delicate operation. <laughs> Make sure you work it well and then start turning it off and you'll have no trouble. There she goes. But don't pinch down on these uh, tubes with the uh, pliers. It's just gently holding it. All right, so that's one. And let's go for the other one. There she goes. There's some smoke. Ah, this is in good and tight this time. You can see the, the liquid wrench uh, squirting out around the nut. I'll get her good and hot. Maybe we'll get it in one crack. And you can use a torch on this, but if you use a torch, you should take the rubber dust shields off of the calipers first. All right, let's see how this goes. We'll find a place for this to sit. Oh yeah, that's good, look. Yeah, that one's good. I'm gonna put a little more licomatazzi on it. There she goes. Perfect. All right, so that's that part's done. All right, I'll get that unthreaded and we'll go around to the rest of it. Time to break these apart. Um, now, before we do that, if you wanted to give it a shot of air, like this is, it was a common practice as well, and I don't like showing, I really don't want to be showing people that don't know what they're doing. If you're a seasoned mechanic, well, you probably aren't watching my stuff anyway, because you already know how to do all this stuff but you can give it a shot of air before you took those lines out and it might force those pistons out. Um, I'm gonna assume that they all need something more, but if you are gonna use air to press, put a stick of wood between so that it catches them, but be very, very careful where your hands are, where your face is. Compressed air can be extremely dangerous, especially when it's, it's build up a charge and then let go, like stored energy and let go. So I don't really want to show someone that. It can be done with compressed air, but if you're going to try that, do a lot of research on that first on the energy uh, around compressed air because it, compressed air can be very dangerous, um, at, but you can use it. But in my experience with these types of pistons with the four at once, you will get one out with compressed air and you're still gonna to have to go find another method. So let's just go right to the, 
to the last ditch resort method, short of sending it away and have it rebuilt. All right, so I've got my uh, caliper in the vise, got my 9 16th. Let's give it a little rattle here. Take them off kind of evenly if you can. There. These bolts, I believe, if I remember correctly, are the same length. And there's that hose, that line. You'll want to blow that line out before you put it back on as well. Make sure there's no debris in it. And yes, these bolts are the same length, so you won't get them mixed up. Set them aside, you'll need them later. So now, all it is, you split apart the caliper. All right, so we'll set one side, one piece aside, and I'll show you what's in here. So, oh, there's oil. Now look how black that oil is, look. It's, this had to come off anyway. No much wonder it's sticking. Anyway, I got oil all over the place. Catch it in the rag here. There's our caliper drained out. One side of the caliper, rather. Now these rubbers here, these dust boots, they come right off easily. You pull up on them and pull them right off. Set them aside. If they're not torn up and they're in good shape, like these ones are nice and pliable, you reuse them. Yeah, same on this side, seems to be good. Um, but really, if you want to do 100%, uh, you will get a new kit. They come in the kit. I think it's like 30 bucks. Well, it was probably about 70 now, but it was 30 at one time, Canadian, for a kit. But I don't have one or I would do it. But I'm pretty sure these are just uh, sticking. I don't think that it's a, it's a rust issue and I don't think there's a seal going. They're not leaking or anything. So my experience with that is that you can reuse the square seal inside. Okay, so we've got the, the seals all off. And uh, now you're saying, well, what am I gonna do here? You got two holes, how are you gonna get these pistons out? And uh, you don't wanna be prying on, or you putting vice grips on and yanking them. These are fairly expensive. So you take the banjo bolt from the brake line and you thread it in the, where the brake line went on, the, one, the rubber line coming from the car like so, it'll thread all the way in on these calipers. Now it may not be the same on all of them, but it will thread all the way in. Get that a little bit tighter. When you're tightening it up in the vise, watch you don't grab those uh, lips there. I almost did. So you tighten it up and I think just hand tight would be good. So now here's the trick part. This is where, this is where things get easy, even though these are probably stuck in. So what you do, you take a, a tube thread nut for a brake, brake line nut and tap it out and put a grease fitting in it. So this is I think a quarter inch tap. I tap down inside, I put a grease fitting in and I put that right in the, in the fitting hole. It doesn't have to go in tight, like it doesn't have to be sank, sank straight down or cinched straight down, I should say. It just has to be in enough to uh, doesn't come out easily. This is actually the brake line hole, sorry, not the, it's not the bleeder hole. The bleeder hole on these cars is over here and you'll leave that in for now. So you put it in the, where that brake line came out that we took out and again, you don't, you don't wanna cramp those right down, just snug, not even, not bit right down tight. So now you'll need a clamp like so just a C-clamp or any kind of clamp that you can get on these things. They're a little bit difficult because there's ridges on these calipers on the back side and more so on the, uh, on the outer part of it. So you just want to clamp it a little bit on there, not super tight. You'll want this all to be able to move a tiny bit. So now that you've got it loosely clamped on, get yourself a grease gun. That's what this grease fitting was for. You probably already figured that out. So now make sure you have a full tube of grease or at least another tube of grease on hand because if you haven't checked it, you will probably run out. It doesn't take a lot of grease, but it does have to fill those channels up. And you say, well, that's a waste of grease. Well, you can always put it in a condiment cup. That's what I do. I just, I have some on hand. I keep them on hand. And when you get the pistons out, you can scrape that grease out and you can use it for something. You won't be able to use it in a place that needs clean grease, but you'll be able to use it in Things. So anyway, so now I've got this 
plugged off and I've got a plug in there with a the grease fitting and it'll take quite a few shots at first. So let me get that done and I'll bring you back when I get it started. All right, after about uh, 20 or so pumps on the old grease gun here, 20, 25 pumps. If you're doing a hand one, that's kind of what you're looking at. I just saw this one starting to creep. So I hope that you guys can see that. So you'll see that piston starting to come out. So I'll bring it out most of the way and then I'll back off, I'll change the clamp over to this side. Actually, I'm gonna loosen this clamp off a little bit. Maybe I'll get both going at the same time. All right, let's see how it happens here. It'd be great if I get them both moving. And they are, good, good. Just keep backing off one clamp because you'll need, as long as they're both moving equally, it'll be good. There we go. See them moving? So whichever one gets ahead of the other, you just let the other one catch up. So like that. Now the other, this one's held by the clamp. I'll let this one catch up a little bit. Now I'll back this one off. At some point, this isn't gonna keep working that way. Yep, like that, look at that. So it popped out. So now I'm gonna to have to kind of clean some grease out clean this piston a little bit, set it back in there some. Actually, I might be able to clamp that in. Haha, <laughs> it's holding. If I can clamp that back in, that'll be great. So let me see if I can get that clamped on and we'll see if we can get this one to pop out. Okay, I got the uh, clamped back up again. And let's see if we can get the other one move and not any grease come out around this. It may have to tighten this up a little bit more yet. There it comes. They're both loosed, loosen. I'm just gonna hold that there for now to make sure this one comes out a little further. I think it'll be good just to hold it. This one should pop out. There it goes. There. This one's loose. This one's a little bit tight. No, oh, she's coming. There she comes. So it's kind of a bit of a balancing act. Hey, look at that. And there's that old crud. Look at that coming out. Whoa, that's dirty oil. These definitely need to be taken apart. So I'll be doing both sides, but I won't be doing both sides here. So now you, don't, you want to get rid of that grease, so this is what you can decide. You can throw it in the garbage, or you can take a condiment cup and put it in the condiment cup and hang on to it. I've got two, one for each side. This is the cheapest grease I could get. It's just Canadian Tire multi-purpose, $9 a tube, so it's a pretty cheap way of getting this stuff done. Set that aside, and uh, you can use that for lubing up slides or anything like that. So now that you got that out, I'll clean this up a little bit and I'll show you why these stick. And there's no ring in there that we have to take out. Let me get rid of this grease gun. So I'm just gonna quickly wipe one of these out and then I'll show you what happens to these. Right in here, there you see that black O-ring. There's a black square O-ring in there. And these rust around here. And these pistons, get rusty and uh, these look not bad but I won't know till I clean them up and I'll show you how I clean them up first let's go after the o-ring uh, get the o-rings out of there so they're not sitting in that grease so all I do is clean around them a bit and I have a little uh, you got to be careful with these you don't want to break these o-rings unless you have a kit well it doesn't matter but they come out easily so I've got a little uh, dental pick kind of thing here the hook on it just get underneath. Now, I believe these O-rings are square all the way across, like from new, but since these have been in before, you'll want to try to keep the side in and out right, because I think as they wear, I can't really see it here, but we'll look later. One side gets a little bit rounded and the other side stays flat. So you'll keep it flat 
with the, with the outside up or whatever makes work for you. But you will be able to see once you uh, clean that up what I'm talking about. And don't dig into the O-ring, try to go along and get under it. They generally aren't in too bad there. See, it popped right out. And again, remember which side is out. And usually there's a bit of rust on the outside part. And that's it. So now it's cleaning up the, the, the caliper itself. Look how bad that is. Whoa. Like I said, both sides are getting done on this car. No wonder they're sticking a bit. So now that you've got all that done, this is where I'll go clean it all. So let me get it cleaned up. I've got some solvent there. And we'll just work on one side for now. The other side is exactly the same. But before we do that, I'm gonna clean up these pistons and I'll show you what I do with those. Okay, I got a bit of solvent in a, in a drain pan here. Just a, it's just like a, like a Varsol, it's just mineral spirits. So clean up, get that grease off, wipe it all down. And this is where you have to decide, do I wanna put new pistons in, push pistons in, or are these good enough? Or do I send the whole thing off and have them rebuilt? Because I don't think you can just buy them now. I think you have to send yours in, but I'm not 100% sure of that, because these are getting hard to get a hold of, and they're getting very expensive. So what I do, where's my steel wool? I take my piston and I just clean it up with some steel wool. The same as, you, it's chrome, so it's the same as cleaning up a bumper on a car. You don't wanna be using sandpaper on these, scratching that chrome up. So just use some steel, fine steel wool and just go over it and look how nice that's looking already. Probably wouldn't hurt to wear a pair of gloves in the solvent, but I'm lazy today, but yeah, you, you make your own safety, safety choices and you live with your, the results. <laughs> so look at that, look how nice, look how nice that is. Now you have to clean, the, clean that uh, dust seal groove up because that's where the dust seal sits. And you can do that with even that, uh, that, piece, that uh, pick I used. Just go through and dig it out. It's like a piston ring almost. But anyway, you scratch all that out, get the dust seal cleaned up. The in here doesn't matter so much because it's exposed to the weather anyway. So there's one done. Where's the other one? Right here. We'll get this one done. See how, there it is. A little bit of steel wool makes a big difference. Now. As I was saying, if this is pitted with and rusted through, yeah, I think you're probably better off to replace them. Don't, uh, I mean, if you only need it till the new ones come, that's fine till you get new pistons. So now I've got my piece in here. Now you can go ahead with the steel wool and the solvent and clean up in there. It does okay, but it doesn't do much on the rust around the lip, but it gets it down to a lot of it will come off. So you can go ahead and do like a pre-clean with the steel wool. It really cleans out the, the cylinders nice. There's a little chip of something in there that I'll have to get out. So anyway, so when you get down to where the steel wool is no longer effective, get yourself a piece of emery paper, emery cloth, and just go around the outer ring. Even the inside, this is a, fine, this is a fairly fine emery paper or uh, emery cloth, and it, it'll take that, that rust right off. I'll show you. So right there, so it'll get rid of that rust. You may have to work at it a bit, like so. You know, a little bit of focus on it, a little bit of elbow grease, like so. but you'll have to do this to, to get those pistons to work properly. All right, let me continue with that and I'll get back to you. All right, so I got most of it cleaned up pretty good. Uh, now this uh, O-ring groove, you'll wanna clean that out very good because it does get crusties in there. So I'm just using that same pick and I'm using it to go around on the top and then I'll Kind of change my angle a little bit and get it on the bottom or you can switch to a different pick which i probably have to do 
I don't see my other one right here, but I'll get it. But yeah, this, this groove here on both sides, you'll want to get any dirt debris out of there because that'll, that's a recipe for more binding or just uh, leaking. Get it all cleaned out because there's quite a bit of dirt in there. And uh, once you get that all cleaned out nicely, you can, uh, we'll go and put the seals in once I get this done rather. See how much dirt is in there? Right in those little cracks. It's, they may not be able to see it, but there is a lot of dirt right down in that, in that crack. And uh, so we got everything cleaned up pretty good. Uh, just wanted to mention, uh, I'm using solvent to clean up like a mineral spirit to clean up these O-rings uh, for that. Don't leave them in there to soak. Just dip them, clean them. I just run a, run my, dip them and run my fingernail around and then take a cloth and wipe the solvent off right away. Uh, I'm not sure how they will react if you leave it in there, so it's better not to leave it in. The same with the boots. Sometimes this rubber, because it's designed for brake fluid, doesn't take well to other types of uh, petroleum products. So now, uh, I'm gonna do this one first. And this is the outer part that it was. So I just take a little bit of uh, brake fluid. I have in my condiment cup there, just uh, lubricated a bit. This is a, these are square seals. Uh, some of them are very clear, in my understanding. Some brake calipers have a very distinctive look to them. They have to go a certain way. Get in there, you. This one pops right in. Just make sure it's not twisted. Lube it up. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about doing this on a modern brake caliper. Modern brake calipers are so inexpensive, it's probably not worth even the effort. But these ones here are very quite specialized and they're getting quite expensive to get. So if you can get one that the pistons are like this, still good chrome on it, then by all means, you should be going after it. Now I push it in and I don't push them all the way down to start with. Like so. And I'll do the other one. Making sure that the outer part of the seal is up. You'll have to remember, a lot of times you'll feel a little bit rough because it'll be rusty on it. I'll put a little on this too while I'm at it. And these just pop right in. Sometimes they can be fiddly, but they seem to pop right in nicely, just like so. Um, by all means, if you're planning this job with a, not an emergency job, get a, set of, get a new replacement kit, It'd be great. You can put a little oil in the brake oil in there ahead of time if you want, but I don't seem I don't bother with that. I just let it bleed in that when the time comes. The oil on the piston, that's brake fluid I'm using, not engine oil, brake fluid only. It slides in nice like so. Now, the reason I don't push them all the way down to start with is uh, getting these boots on. They're not hard to get on, just gotta get them on the outer ring first. Then you'll feel them clip on. And then when you push them down, they'll just pop right on like that. This one's got a, a tiny tear in it. I'm gonna go look for another one. I think what happened there, I'll bet you got caught. That's something I wanted to talk about too. When you're putting these two halves back together, see this is the where the mating surface is. You gotta make sure that this is up out of the way when you bring them together. Or it'll probably, that's what happened to that. Someone headed off and nipped it but that's what happens. Not the end of the world, but just be cautious of where you're, it doesn't get caught between, on the same on this side, the mating surfaces. So you can take a peek in here to see that they're on and it's not on on this one all the way. Take a peek around, there it drops down. That's good. And you can push the piston down and then it pops right into place. These are Kelsey Hayes. Made in the USA, 56093, That's the original number on these. And like I said, when you're putting these together, make sure that the rubber is out of the way of the mating surface. This one's not too bad. This one's a little bit more encroaching. And that's it for that side. All right, so here we're on the other half. Uh, we'll pull these rubbers off. Just uh, make sure that they are moving before you yank on them. They're a little tighter in here because you have all this piece, this uh, casting in the way. So just don't, don't pull until they rip. If they're sticking, well then find out why they're sticking. So like that. Now, uh, in the quest of trying to make everything easier, 
I decided that in my vise, if I put a piece of steel, you could use a piece of wood of the same, like a two by, uh, two by one or something like that. It just fits, this fits perfectly in there. So I can actually, so you can see that, just loosen this off a little bit. And then I can put my uh, grease fitting in here. Same deal. Now we're using the old bleeder screw on this side, so you'll want to tighten that down. Put the grease fitting in. And again, this doesn't have to be in terribly tight, just enough so grease doesn't squirt out around it, just like so. And the same with this uh, bleed screw. So where's my uh, grease gun? And uh, we'll start pumping this one out. I think the vise is a bit way to go, but we'll see. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, there we go, I'll put it like that, and then you can see them pump. So in theory, neither one can get, we can pump them out equal. If we can keep doing that, it'll be great. It'll take a few shots. There we go, she's moving. This one, the vise is tightening up, and here comes the other one. So that's actually a pretty good way of doing it. Look at that. Get a little pressure on it, and might be able to just let it come out even. Look at this. Keep pressure on it, you might get them both the same. Aha! I think we got her. Look at that. Well, let's see how that worked. We may have to put a clamp on one yet. We'll see. I thought I heard air hissing. Nope, they're not out yet. But that got them a lot closer. All right, so let's do it this way. I think this one's out the furthest, so let's try just clamping one side. That grease off there is all over my hand. <laughs> right in the way aren't I so let's clamp one back in like so this should push this one out see look at that now if we go to this one this one should push this one out or at least we can do it with the grease there it goes look popped right out so that's even a better way There it goes, look, I, can, I think I can get this out. Yeah, look, look at that, okay, perfect. Ah, uh, that's better, that's even quicker than the way I was doing it. So that's all I used was a piece of steel, but a piece of wood will work. Depends on your vise, you may have room in your vise. All right, you see that? Let's get these out. Get out of there. All right, one piston, I think these are salvageable as well. Another piston, look at that. A little bit of rust on it, but I think it'll clean up. Where's my condiment cup? Save the grease for, for some other project that doesn't require it to be super clean. Set it aside, and that's it. And I'll go ahead and clean this side all up and we'll put it back together. The other side's all cleaned up, ready to go back together. Uh, I think I covered it in the, in the first half of this one, but I'm not sure if I did it, so I'll just cover it again now, is that there's a journal, a passage between the two pistons chambers right here. So make sure you get all the grease out of it, the grease out of uh, the hole that goes to your crossover line and the hole that goes into your brake bleeder. Make sure all of them are free of grease just in case I miss that. Because sometimes I get going and forget. All right, so I've got everything cleaned up, except for these O-rings. So I'm just gonna give them a quick clean here. And it's not hard, I'm, this rag, no, this rag here was soaked in solvent. So 
If you're worried about d damaging the O-ring, you can uh, do it this way. Run your fingernail over that and you'll feel that it's clean. The backside's clean. Just run it over your solvent rag and then that way you won't overdo the uh, solvent on the rings and damage them. I'm not sure if this uh, mineral spirits will damage them and I'm not taking the chance. A little bit of brake fluid on the ring. In the hole they go. And like that, just like so. Put a little bit of brake fluid on it. Brake fluid on the piston. Make sure the pistons go in the right way. This goes in. This piece goes in. <laughs> oh yeah, they cleaned up nice. There's no uh, blemishes or anything on these. A little wear there, but it's there's no rust, no pitting. So just sink that in like that, part way down. Get my other one. Where's my solvent rag? Right there. This is quick. It doesn't take much. Clean the O-ring off. Run my fingernail along, actually. Yeah. This is the outer part because it had a little bit of rust on it. Right there. A little bit of uh, brake fluid on it. Put it in the hole. Put it in there like that. Brake fluid on this. Brake fluid on the piston. Again, this is the inside. This goes down. And they just slip. Whoop. Make sure you get them in square. <laughs> there she goes. Just like so. In a little too far, but that's okay. We'll get her. Just pull it back out some. Now, clean your hands off on the outer part. Don't need oil on that. Like I said, try to get that lip on best you can. Sometimes these ones are a little bit harder because of that casting that's there. Like so. Yep. You'll feel it pop over and if you have to, check around here, both sides in the back. Push it down and then that will pop right in there. Now this one, because you got have interference, you have to get underneath of it or work it around somehow. And then you also have the other side to deal with. So this can be a little bit more challenging, but you will feel them. That one's not down. I can feel it. it's up on top right in here. Get down there, you. I think it's in there now. Let's have a peek. Yep. Nope. See, it's not down. There. there. There, it popped right in. I felt it go. Shove it down. And then it, the, the boot will work on there. Now, these ones you're pretty much free and clear to do anything you want with. But when you bring the two sides together, like so, where's the other one? When you bring these two sides together like this, you want to make sure that these rubbers aren't between your, your mating surfaces or you'll split the rubber like so. Put the bolt in a little bit, just start it so you can get a visual check. See that rubber's down underneath that. There it goes. There we go. Just double check. You don't want to pinch it. I don't think it's in there. No. But you can pull those out easily too, so be careful when you're doing it. You'll be doing it all over again. Oh yeah, like I just did. <laughs> pull them together and in like that. That should be good. There we go. That's perfect. 
So you can easily have them thrown off until you get the bolts down. There we go. That's better. If the bolts are going hard, then probably there's something wrong. All right, so it's all back together. It didn't pinch the, at the mating surface. Uh, I wanna put this line back on, but before I tighten it all the way down, because I forgot to put the line on. So I need to take this one back out, like so, and then put the line on. Now you can uh, just sort of start it and then get your lines in place first. Otherwise, it can be a little hard if there's a lot of tension on them. All right. All right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to do this bottom one first because they sprung a little bit. They, I'm sure that these have been bent at some point on the car. All right. There we go. You just got to start them in and just make sure you can get them started before you tighten everything down. It's gonna come up a little bit like so. There we go. There. Don't cross thread these or you'll be in trouble. And sometimes after being off, they can be a bit painful. <sighs> Make sure there's no dirt in there. I'm gonna put that on in just did to hold it so I can get a little bit of a bend on that so line it up. There we go. There it is. Oh, it's not in yet. This one's a being a this one's being a bit of a stubborn one. It's just not aligned up anymore. Alright. Which way is it going that's not aligning? I think it needs to come up a little and back some. All right, I'll take this back out. Might be give us a little more room to wiggle. Why? Why are you being stubborn? probably sprung at some when we were heating it up. We got it this time. Yeah, sure feels like it. Yeah, I think when we were heating it, it got it twisted that way a little bit. That's what happens. But if you can get it off without breaking it off, that's good. All right, that's good there. Uh, I can manipulate this down a little bit, get that bolt in. Like so, hit it with the impacto. And that's probably good enough. I don't know what the torque is on them. You can torque them if you like, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna tighten down these all the way. And that's like snug, like all uh, those types of fittings. You don't want to over tighten them. Same 
this one. Just snug. The uh, banjo or not, I'll clean up, blow it out, and uh, clean it up. And I believe my fitting, my bleeder screw, is still in the in the wash. Uh, hopefully, someone found that helpful. Uh, if they're struggling to get these pistons out and be tempted to put a vice grip on and crank them out, I can tell you up front, putting a pair of vice grips on these may work, but highly likely you're, if they're stuck hard, you're not gonna get them out with a pair of vice grips. I believe there's a tool that you can get that will go inside the piston and you it opens up and you can turn them out. Uh, if it's not super stuck, if you're just doing a rebuild because there's a leaky one or something, maybe that'll work good. But uh, really, um, Outside of using air, grease works really well. Well, air works so, so well. Grease works the best in my experience. Uh, just a brake line fitting with a grease fitting threaded into it. You'll have to, to tap that out some to fit that grease fitting in, but that's all you need. It's very cheap. And uh, if you have a kit to put in, but perfect, go for it. If your pistons are a little bit rusted and pitting, probably should plan on uh, redoing this again uh, down the road. I mean, you can clean them up and it'll get you by for a while, but if they're pitted and rusted, it's likely gonna happen again to you. These ones are actually in pretty good shape. They cleaned up nice. So there's a lot of years left in this uh, caliper. These calipers aren't cheap. And I think I mentioned earlier, if it's a, a modern caliper, single piston caliper, or just a modern caliper that are easy to get, just toss it and get a new one because it's not worth to go through all this uh, you know unless it's an extremely oddball one you can't get parts for but these are going to be oddball ones and getting hard to find the whole caliper anyway uh, hopefully this was helpful to someone it's my way of doing it um, you may have a better way if you have a better way put it down in the comments and share it with everyone else we'd all like to know better ways and that's what we're trying to do here is find better ways of doing things and uh, help each other out. Anyway, thanks a lot everyone for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.